It's the Small Business Rally Point for Monday, June 29th, 2020. I'm Pat Miller. I'm the Idea Coach, and this is an episode, well, it's a weekly show. We get together and we talk about all things small business, and we have a roundtable at the end of our conversation. Plus, we try and learn something, and today we are going to learn from the LinkedIn lady and talk about a bunch of fun stuff. But first, let's give a salute to our partners. A big thank you to our sponsors, Serendipity Labs and the Idea Collective Small Business Social Network that's up and running. It launched on June 1st, and we're up to about 60 members in the group, which is fantastic. We're just getting ready to step off on a membership drive with a nationally recognized keynote speaker as our anchor, who's going to do a private webinar just for us. So we'll give you more details on that later on in the show. A shout out to the ultimate uh, connector and my business BFF, Jennifer Buchholz, for pushing the buttons and being the producer of the show. And if you want to stay connected to the show, it's real easy to do. Just text the word biz to 414-240-1315 or idea to 414-240-1315. If you text us biz, we'll send you text alerts for who's gonna be on the show and when. And if you text us idea, well, we will tell you all about the brand new Idea Collective, invite you to be a member. So on the show today, as I mentioned, we are gonna talk about LinkedIn. The LinkedIn lady, Sue Gresham, is joining us and we will uh, get to her in just a second. We'll also talk about the Rally Point Roundtable and we're gonna talk wins of the week. And I have a few wins to share, but they're not mine. It's news about some of the folks inside the Idea Collective and some others that had some great things. So think about what your wins were from last week and be ready to share those. Also, we can crack open the Idea Slam portion of the call if you have um, some things you'd like to have some help with. We got some great brains in the room today, as well as Michael Rampola in front of the magic whiteboard. So if you need some help, a little bit of brainstorming, that's what we are here for, is to collaborate and work together. But first, let's get to the content and the meat of the call. You don't get a chance to hang out with the LinkedIn lady and not uh, soak up as much knowledge as you can. So welcoming uh, Sue Gresham, the LinkedIn lady, to the call today. So Sue, it's uh, been a minute since we've heard from you. Uh, how are you doing and uh, what's going on in your life? Oh, well, I'm doing great. Um, personally, there's one thing that's going crazy busy, and that is we're putting our house on the market on Wednesday. Ah, so, and we have a two family and Alison Cartuccio, those of you that know her, she's my realtor. Um, shout out to Alison. She is amazing. But anyway, so imagine moving, putting together your house. This is a personal thing, but we've been here 27 years. We have 27 years of crap. <laughs> <laughs> we literally hauled away two dumpsters of crap. So I feel really good, um, but I'm really, really tired. Yeah. And then I have some other stuff that I'll share with you guys later. Um, but other than that, LinkedIn is just amazing. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. Um, there's three things I wanted to touch base on. Um, I don't know. I, it's, it's nice to see all you guys. And I know a bunch of you are living on LinkedIn. And I know some of you aren't. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about a, cool, a couple of cool things that are happening. And then I wanted to talk to you about um, something that's really annoying me on LinkedIn. And I want to share that with you guys because I don't want you to be that kind of guy. Okay. How's that sound? Good that's, stuff? That sounds great. Go All for right. it. What do you have? Okay. So the first thing is you may have noticed this, especially if you are in the Idea Collective or if you've been paying attention to Pat's um, brand crafted group um, last week, or maybe it was two weeks and then maybe it was last week headlines on LinkedIn changed and they changed. They are so cool that I'm just like geeking out about it. Um, before when you had on your desktop and I'm only talking desktop now before you had a, a, a total of about 120 some characters that you could use to fill in your headline. And you know what your headline is? It's that piece right under your photo, right? And, and it's a piece that shows and you describe who you are and what, what you do. I'll talk about that in just a second. But that headline goes around and it follows you everywhere. When you invite someone to connect, that's what they see by your name. When they are looking at you, you know, when you're posting and when you're commenting and all that, that's what they see. I mean, that is your billboard on LinkedIn besides your smiling face. They increased the number of characters allowed 
to 220 characters. That's a, like a boatload. That's like 100 more characters than what you had. And it's visible and it's available now to everybody, whether you are working on your desktop or working on your device. And, oh, that reminds me, I got to turn my device off. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, Let me jump in with a question real quick, Sue. Did they give yeah. us any reason why they expanded it to 220? Was there, uh, or is it just a user, something users have been asking for, or why did it happen? Do you know? People have been asking for it forever. And on, if you were using the mobile, um, the, IO, the Apple version of the mobile, okay, you, a lot of you already had the ability to expand it to like 160 some characters. And so what they're doing is they're making it more user friendly. And, and they're also, you know, here's the thing. I think LinkedIn is really trying to up their game now. They've changed the summary section to an about where, you, you know, that philosophy has changed a lot. That about section is now, uh, I think it allows, oh my gosh, um, 2,500 characters. I guess that's a news flash used to be only 2000. So they're trying to really get it so people are doing more engaging and everything else. So the idea behind your headline, and here's what I highly recommend you do with your headline. It's not, it's keywords, right? In the whole search algorithm, but it's really, you really want to say who you are, what you do, and who you serve or the, a problem that you solve. Okay, you want to make it like an elevator speech, but not a speech. It's only 220 characters. So fill it with keywords that describe who you are and then tell people what you do. And then make it industry specific or make it about a problem that you solve. Okay, so those are the, really because you want people to read your LinkedIn profile, right? You want people, and even if they don't read your profile, you want them to know who you are when they are looking at the rest of your stuff, like your invites and what you're doing with your, with your um, content and so on and so forth. So you want to draw them in, who you are, what you do, and the problem that you solve. Those are the three things that you can fit into those 220 characters really easily now. Do you anticipate that if we get these keywords right, we'll get more profile views or better engagement from the customers we're trying to reach? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, how many times do you look at somebody's profile or, or even just see them on, um, you know, in the comments or, you know, when they're doing, when they're doing engagement and you wonder who the heck is this person, right? Have you ever clicked on anybody else's profile based on what they said that they did? I mean, I do it all the time. Right. And so, and Jennifer is talking about something. I'm not quite sure what she's mouthing there, but um, <laughs> but ultimately, that's you. Know, you want to make that your billboard. Keywords, keywords, engagement, and those are the things. And you know, let's talk about engagement for a minute because when we get a subject matter expert on the show, we want to make sure that everyone knows this is an active Q and A. So if you have a question for the LinkedIn lady while we're talking, drop it into the chat, and we will work you into what we're doing. So right. a big change with headlines. Can we talk about video on LinkedIn? Because it seems to be the rage. Is that what's getting all the engagement right now? That's getting the majority of the engagement. And the thing about video is there's two kinds. There's this LinkedIn Live, which is kind of like a Facebook Live. The people that are getting the LinkedIn Live right now are the thought leaders or the people that have been doing videos and, and super engaged with, um, but you have to apply to get LinkedIn Live. Um, I don't know that anybody in this group has got it. Andy, are you in here? Do you have it? Andy Weens, I, I don't know. Yeah, um, I, I do not. I have heard mixed reviews on whether uh, it works. I had little success with Facebook Live. Um, but yeah, no, I, I have not experienced it. Yeah, I, I don't know anybody. Um, I Phil Gerbyshack who is an old Milwaukee guy who lives in Tampa now. I know he's got LinkedIn Live now, and a lot of thought leaders do, but I don't really know of anybody else that's been granted access for that. So we'll just talk about videos instead, because videos are something that we can all do, okay? You know, you can do them on Zoom, and you download them, you know, to your computer, and then you upload them into, I mean, and that's just Zoom. God only knows all the great stuff that Andy and, and Pat and other people are doing, but, um, it, Ideally here, you want to make a video that's a couple of minutes long, 
no longer than that because people aren't going to stick around. And you want to talk about what it is that you're doing, what's exciting in your world, your business world. It's not a commercial. It's a how you can get, how people can get to know you and how you can share the, the share your brilliance, you know, share the stuff that you know and that you talk about and that with your customers and your clients all the time and share that brilliance. And when you do a, a live and you upload it and it's a couple of minutes, um, you can get such great traction. Um, I will tell you that Andy is amazing at it. Um, there's Pat and, and the Young Guns, which is a different, whole new thing that you guys have started. That, which I'm assuming we're gonna talk about at some point too, maybe not, but that's amazing. I have learned so much from some of the people that I follow, not just about LinkedIn, but about what they do. And it's about their personality. And so people, because people want to engage with you, they want to like you. They're not just going to, they will read your post. Yes. But it's really, video is really the thing. And so, um, and, and I should say that I am just getting out of my video. Um, what's the word I want to look, the word I'm going to say is I'm afraid to do video. Okay. <laughs> and I, I'm just getting out of that now. And I've created a couple that I'm going to start to post over the next week, couple weeks. It's, it, don't, it doesn't matter what you look like. It really matters about how you just share what you got. And that's it. Um, I know Andy, I'm going to pick on Andy. If you're here still, um, you've done some amazing things and gotten great traction. Would you share a, a tip or two of yours? I know this is really uh, important to you, but... Yeah, no, uh, uh, Jen turned off my video because, you know, she's a really good host and I'm obnoxious. So she, that was the right decision. So <laughs> as much as you can't see my smiling face right now, I will say a few words and I'll do my best not to swear. Um, but you said something that got me twitchy, which is how you are. Oh, there we are. Now we're back to starting the videos. Okay. So you said something, Miss LinkedIn lady, which I will shamelessly plug you two and a half years ago. I used you. I used you to get my LinkedIn better. And now I'm hearing you with some limiting self-beliefs about why you're not doing videos and making me twitchy because uh -oh. do the something thing. <laughs> what do you like a little answer. dig, like a horn. Wooga. Something like that. But that's it. Like here I am, right? We're all on video all day. Right. Zoom and otherwise, right? This face, I know I got the mustache, looks a little bit better. But overall, just do the thing. And in time, you will find your cadence whether it's produced videos, live videos, right here with no lighting, with lighting, captions, no captions, just do the thing. That's it. Let's follow up though, Andy, your videos that you do, how many followers do you have? And when you do one, what kind of engagement do you get? So 10,000, we've got about 10,000 followers right now. And of that are connections, I'd say a minimal performing video is 1,000 to 1,500 views. Um, an average performing video is four to 5,000. A good video is, is greater than 5,000. And yes, 8,000 followers of the stash. Thank you, Susan. True. Um, but True. like today, for example, because we announced YG, I'd say in the last, uh, let's say 72 hours from Friday till today, announcing and building the YG TV launch, I've gained 25 to 35 followers. And that's not just, button. those are people that actively went out to find me. Hey, I saw you here. I saw you here. Now, some of them could be random, but when you put out higher quality videos and, and tag the different people, your connections will engage. So um, I've had videos that have gone north of 10 or 15,000 that were just shot on my cell phone because the content was good. And I was talking about LinkedIn at the time. So um, you will find your rhythm, but you got to start somewhere. Captions always work. You're never wrong paying three bucks or whatever it is for captions to be added to your video because a lot of people are watching and not always listening. So captions, I say, is key. And then be organic. Be yourself. Whatever that looks like. So uh, Sue, the Miss LinkedIn lady, I think you're beautiful as you are. Just hit the record button from time to time. Also, don't, don't hesitate to repurpose content. Over the last couple of months, if you watch some of my content, it's from a fireside chat I did, right? So we repurposed it. There's good bits. Repurpose videos. There's no, there's no shame in that, right? So every time you're on Zoom, hit the record button. And then like J. Pat Miller, I would say if I were you, Sue, hey, Pat, can I get a little bit of this content from today's recording? Because I want to repurpose that and put out 
30, 45, and 60 second videos. Hey, Pat, can I get some of the recording? <laughs> <laughs> so those are, so those, are my, those are my three pieces of advice. I think, I think you made a really great point, Andy, that I want, to I want to put on that is, Andy mentioned tags, okay? He is tagging people that are either he's talking to specifically to or that he's talking about or that he knows that his topic is super relevant for. Now, he's not going crazy and tagging people just randomly. It's very, very, very systematic and organized about who he's doing. The idea behind tagging is that you want to extend your reach. And when you tag someone, it's just like it's the app mention. You know, it's what we do in Facebook. It's what we do other places, okay? In LinkedIn, it's very valuable when it's relevant. Cautionary tale is don't tag people that it's not relevant for, though, okay? Because you're going to tick them off. And you're going to, and what's going to wind up happening is you're going to wind up losing because people will realize, hey, you know, you're tagging me just because I got a thousand followers. Right. Okay. So, but so, tagging is a huge deal and it's a great, great comment, Andy. Thank you. I want to come back to you in just a second, Sue. But Andy, before you go away, uh, I want to ask you about uh, captions. I know your people probably do the captions for you, but do you know of a tool that does that? And if you don't, Sue, do you know a tool that does that? I don't. So tell me. Uh, I can go upstairs and ask Bobby because it costs yeah. us $3. And then the auto caption. So I, I will get you that. I'll drop it in the chat. Um, so yeah, so the, the three takeaways are just start doing it because you will find what works for you. If it is in your office, right where you are, Sue, awesome. If it's cam, whatever, do the thing. Second, add captions to the thing. And then third is tag and write the copy that's relevant to the right people. That whole, like, I tag the same 99 people in every video. All you're going to do to your point is irritate them. Tag two or three people that it's very relevant to. Either they appear in the video or they were part of the collaboration of the video. Or this is, what's that like? Or contextual. I use the word contextual. I don't know what that means. Someone else might know what that means. But no, <laughs> in the context, right? And then um, don't, you know, when you're doing that, don't, you, you also then have to engage on LinkedIn. You can't just post and be like, okay, I did my thing today. You got to engage with people. And that's whole other conversation, nothing to do with video. I'm going to go find that answer for you with the website from uh, the one and only Bobby. And, and number four is grow a mustache. That's the fourth key. Yeah, you, you start with a COVID no. beard and you cut it out. That's the key. <laughs> start with a COVID beard. Right. I'll go talk to Bobby. Good luck. Okay. Now, Sue, that one. Let's Thank you. Talk. Thank Sue, you, Andy. That was great. Thank you. Can we talk about these LinkedIn bots, these, these spammers that are showing up in my invitations, and then once I accept their connection, they will not leave me alone. What is going on with that? Oh my God, it's so, okay, so this is annoying, right? And I bet every single person on this has experienced this garbage. Um, first of all, I need to say that bots are against LinkedIn's terms of service. And if you get caught by LinkedIn, they will definitely shut you down, okay? Here's the thing though. There are all sorts of sub subscription services out there. Some of them are through AppSumo, some of them are for other places. And where, what they do is they get you to buy and that, you know, pay for it. And then what they do is they will automatically hit profiles um, based on keywords, and then they will automatically send invites, okay, whether they're relevant or not. And, and so actually there's two kinds of things that are happening. One of them is those bots, okay, where they're just mass churning out profile views and then they're hitting um, invites and they're spam invites. They're people, you know, it, it's all the same wording and they're just hoping for some connections just, and then once they get in your inbox and if you can, if you accept them without vetting them first, then you wind up, they wind up trying to sell to you. Like the first thing is sell, sell, sell. Um, or the second email is sell, 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 buy my stuff. And that's not the word I want to use. Um, <laughs> if right? you can restrain my... himself, you can restrain yourself. <laughs> exactly. So, so those are, and here's the thing, what you want to do is you want to vet. I mean, you know, when somebody starts their invitation and says, um, hi, I see that you're a brilliant coach. I'd like to connect with you. Well, that's a bunch of BS, right? They don't know that I'm a brilliant coach. They're, it's just a bunch of BS. So um, 
when you're for sure you want to pay attention for sure you want to pay attention to you know who you're connecting with and who you're not but the other thing about that is that that's when they're not bots okay there's people that are out there taking classes and i can i i am not going to name names but there are some um that where they're teaching you how to prospect and how to look for keywords and then they they're giving you the templated wording on what to say in the invitations and i did a i did a blog post or well not a blog post a thing on my facebook group a while back and i showed literally the same day i had two invitations two different people exact same wording mm -hmm. so it it so it, it's a thing and people are thinking that they can use linkedin to buy and sell and it doesn't really matter and you know what the best advice is if you don't know the person or if there's something scammy about them you can go ahead and when you're sending you an invite you can go into the into the um manage area of your invites it's called manage huh? click on it and you can hit a um you can send him a note a message back and say who the heck are you and why should I connect? Or just hit ignore if you know for sure that they're ickies. But I definitely, I mean, I hit, I send notes all the time back. Hey, love to know how, why you invited me to connect. 95% oh. of the time uh. they don't respond because it's, because it's a bot. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the LinkedIn course. You've got a course coming up, which is pretty exciting. And it's going live next week. Is that right? Give us the goodies here because you're going to teach us how to do the LinkedIn. I'm teaching. Yes. Yeah. So this is, this is a, a course that will answer the questions that a lot of people have. Um, you know, your LinkedIn is meant to be a living, breathing thing, right? The LinkedIn lifestyle is not just having a profile, but it's also engaging and connecting and, and doing stuff. This is the first piece of the puzzle is you've got to have a dynamic LinkedIn profile. Other one that gets people to know you and like you and trust you. Every single section on your LinkedIn profile fits at least one of those things, either know, like, or trust. Some of those sections on your LinkedIn profile hit all of them. So I've created Jumpstart Your LinkedIn Profile. It's an online program. Um, it starts next week on Monday. Um, it's mini, it's, it's, five modules, but many lessons that are just a few minutes each, literally from starting from creating your LinkedIn goals, because you got to know why you want to do it. What do you want to say in your LinkedIn, right? You know, do you want them? And, and I know we all want clients and I know we want that, but there's more to us. We all, everybody on this call, and I know almost all of you are really brilliant at what you do. And a lot of the people don't know that you're brilliant at what you do because you haven't told them and you haven't shared it with them. And so um, this program helps you develop that profile so that you are sharing that information. And yes, all of you, Abby, not just almost all, all of you. <laughs> Sorry, I got, to, I got distracted. Um, but seriously, it, it's about helping you build every single piece of your profile so that you will get noticed and you'll get liked. It's op SEO optimized, search optimized, all of that. Um, so there's individual lessons. Every single section of there's 28 pieces to your profile. Did you guys know that? 28 pieces that you can fill in your profile. Sections, mini sections, and I walk through every single one of them. And so, it's, meant, it's independent study course. 28 sections of my profile starting next week. It's two grand, three grand. Oh. Yeah, no, because because this is like this is like a it, this is something you're gonna do forever. Yeah. It's a tool to teach you. It's one ninety seven. One hundred ninety seven. One hundred ninety seven. Oh, that's that's a steal. How long does the course go again? Um, it it starts next week. It goes forever. forever. I mean, like like you have access to it forever once you sign it up for it, and I'll be updating it. Sure. It's really so that you've got that basic tool so that then we can move forward and get you your connections and get you the rest of everything that you need and teach you how to do your engagement and all of that. This is just the first piece of the pie, but it's really important because yeah. once it sets you up, then you are good to go. So, um, and, and I've got, it includes um, some bonuses. I, I've got some cool bonuses in there, like how to write recommendations, how to ask for them and write them and how to, how to manage your skills because you know that skills and endorsements area 
is could be a cluster mess and how to manage that. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in it, um, but it's all because I want, want you guys to get set up. And then once you're set up, you're good to go. And then, and then we work on the rest of it. One of the things that I enjoy about the way you teach LinkedIn is that you teach from, you see this section, do this thing in that section. You see this section, do this thing in that section. I mean, there is some philosophy to it, but there's also just the knockdown, drag out tactical stuff that we need to know. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Best of luck on the course. And I'm sure we can drop a link inside the chat so we can learn more about the course. And as we shift from our presentation portion of Rally Point to the conversation portion, if we have questions for Sue moving forward, uh, let's just drop that into the chat and we'll bring you back on. But Sue, congratulations. And like Andy said, you just did the thing. You came on and got interviewed and this is a step in the right direction. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you for coming on. Uh, thanks to Sue. All right, so let's uh, move on to our roundtable portion of the call. And we have wins of the week is where we're going to start. So if you had a win this week, we want to bring you on and have you share. Uh, and the first win is we're going to welcome Andy back on if he's here with us. Andy, are you with us still? In living color, my good friend, Pat Miller. Okay, so tell us about YGTV because it announced, uh, we announced it today and it's off and running and I think that's a huge win to share. Yeah, oh yeah I, was, I was definitely going to jump on it, so thanks for uh, te teeing me up. So yes, YGTV, the latest from the Young Guns movement, is a, a fully actualized television channel hosted on YouTube and our very first episode of our very first show is called YG Stage where we feature keynote speakers. Now, this isn't the 90,000 people in an auditorium Netflix special. This is the 10 to 12 minutes in an underground comedy club, the good stuff as they're working through fresh material, brand new stuff from the heart. This is an opportunity for keynote speakers to test their new ideas and new theories in a medium like YGTV. It's an opportunity for entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial-minded individuals to hear how keynote speakers prepare, what their thoughts are, those raw emotions about being an entrepreneur and what it means to be an entrepreneur. So YG Stage is one of four shows we're gonna be hosting on YGTV, and the other three shows will be announced uh, coming up, but next show that we've already shot and edited is called YG One-on-One, -on -One, hosted by Paul M. Newberger, where he's sitting down with CEOs, executives, and um, very uh, successful individuals here in Wisconsin and talking about what it means to be successful, what it takes to have long-term sustainability and success. So extremely excited for YGTV, YG Stage episode uh, aired today. It's on YouTube, so click, subscribe, do all the thing. I will drop the link uh, here momentarily if, if Pat Miller uh, doesn't do it already, but I will drop it otherwise. I'm really excited. And then uh, YG one-on-one, -on -one, uh, first episode comes out in two weeks. Awesome. And you did a great job hosting, by the way. Not only were you there, you actually performed and did awesome. So, And, and to, to Michael's point, the mustache was present on, uh, was. on, that, on that first episode. <laughs> yeah, we needed the wide-angle lens to get that bad boy in. You did. It, was, it looked nice. Yeah, it looked nice. Uh, all right, congratulations. Uh, let's bring Sarah Nowacki on. Sarah, are you with us? Can you unmute? Because I think you might have a win that you need to share with all of us. Oh, huh. yeah. Um, I was, um, I won the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel's Top Choice Award for Travel Agent this year. So, yay. For, so, thank you for those who voted. I was excited, pleasantly surprised. Thank you, Abby Miller, for letting me know. I kind of thought she was a little drunk on Sunday morning. <laughs> she, she was, but <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole other issue. But congratulations to, and well, I'll just spoil her, Abby, also. All right, Abby, I've unmuted you. What's your news? Well, I also won for Best Photography Studio. Yay. Yay. So in our network, at least that we scanned abs, because you pulled a lot of these names out. You won, Sarah won. Who else did we have? Allison Cortuccio for Best Realtor. Yes, yes. And Alan Fisher won. Alan for Fisher for Voya yeah. Financial Services. Was there anyone else? Because I we kept on going through the list. It was person after person. Yes. In the chamber. What's uh, it again, Sarah? I thought... Fitness oh. together might have Fitness together. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Baker, that's right. Yes, yeah, in the chamber. I didn't know if he was in. Yeah, in the Brookfield chamber. And Tyler pro profile. 
That's right. That's right. Mary, good catch on that. It was Tyler. And no, uh, Kevin Baker is not yet in the Idea Collective, but I'm willing to pay a bounty for the person that gets Kevin into the Idea <laughs> Collective because this is perfect for him. So uh, consider that a challenge to uh, how much? Name your price, Michael. How about that? Okay, great. Andy just posted, congratulations, Sarah and Abs. Uh, you both deserve it. And I know that that's going to help you this year as you market your business. So congratulations. Um, Jen, Jennifer Buchholz just dropped into the chat the link for uh, YGTV, which is exciting. So uh, who else has some good news to share? I'll take it away. Go for it, JB. I know it's a very exciting time for you all when I can say that in the last two weeks, I've passed five exams <laughs> to, to get my certification as the Microsoft Office expert. But the news that I haven't shared with anybody yet is that like as of five o'clock on Friday, I have met all qualifications to become a Microsoft certified trainer, which is a big-ish deal in their nerd world. So what does that mean? What, what does that allow you to do? So it's a part of a community. I can get um, some different jobs. It also is just a really strong credential that's pretty broadly recognized. And it also is the next step in one of my goals of my professional development this year and other things. Sorry for the horn going off in my backyard. They're the celebrating way. for you. They're, they set up the horn to celebrate. Does that come with a pocket protector like as a prize or is that mail-in separate to get that? You really, really went there, Pat. <laughs> Well, Michael put in the chat, nerd win. I had to at least say something. Well, I'm just going to interrupt real quick here, Jennifer. Andy just got this really cool backpack from his Microsoft certified. I mean, literally just opened it. Do you want to see it? Yeah, we want to see it. Of course we want to see okay. it. Okay. I got it right here. I gave a backpack? Yeah. That's yeah, I guess they did ask thing, me about a gift. Okay, this is, I mean, this thing has got like, you can see, certified. It has got hug, it's got like. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. It, it, it's it's wow, pretty, I'm getting hot about it. <laughs> I had to take the sweater off. It's crazy. So like, this, this could be in your future. Just, I am wow. no surprised, but. That was from his certified trainer, Microsoft certified trainer. I do appreciate that your husband and I can communicate on that level. So, okay. I, I'm going back to mute. Bye. Oh, that's wonderful. So the backpack you get for passing that course doesn't have Star Wars on it. It's really a, a nice looking uh, backpack, which is kind of cool. JB, that's great. We're happy for you. Thanks for supporting my nerd. Uh, it, hey, you are our nerd. We love you. Um, Bob Langhoff, he's got some good news. Uh, Bob, what is your big win? Well, it's not even my big win. It's my wife's big win. For those of you who don't know, my wife is an artist. And for the last year, she's been working on a series of, uh, of pieces. And uh, last week, she finalized the last one and finished her first. You know, two years ago, she went full time with art. And yes, uh, last week she completed her first complete series. And it, it, it's just a huge accomplishment for her. I'm really proud of her on it. So what is her media that she performs in? So it's digital and it's prints. Um, and it, it, she, she draws on a tablet instead of on a pencil and paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. Well, can tell her we said congratulations. Uh, let's see, Michael Rampola, you've got a win to share for us. What do you have, sir? There we go. Um, well, it just came through, so I'm, I'm literally fresh. Um, uh, we were in the run. Spirity was in the running against uh, two other companies to uh, take on a pretty uh, great uh, strategic planning contract, and um, it's really hard when you're up against competition. But we just got news that they'd like to go forward with us, which we're very excited about. Um, we're going to be supporting uh, CEO, owner, and a four-person team, maybe even expanding team. We'll see. Um, but they have a lot of opportunity to grow and scale their business over the next two or three years, and we're really excited to help them get there. So, Congrats. always lo love it when we can help somebody else do their thing better. So tell us what was your role in securing that contract? Were you doing? Um, I was the yeah building relationships. Um, also, I guess crafter of the vision. Um, one of the things that was interesting. We did a, a discovery call, and um, I knew we were in the running against somebody else. And I asked, so sales question. I asked, what have you heard and what I've shared that you haven't heard from your from the other folks you've talked to? Ooh, good. So that showed me some. Thank you. It just came to me at the moment. Um, some differentiating points, and then I said, what haven't you heard from me that would help us? you know, that would help us stay at the front of your of, of my, top of mind for you. Right. And he outlined a couple of things that I hadn't addressed. I said, okay. And then I, I you know, whiteboarded, filled in those gaps. So 
those questions, I don't think I'd ever used them before, but they like just flowed from where I was at. And hey, sales folks out there, feel free to use those. They, they worked well in this case. Yeah. And the whiteboard made you money. I'm not saying it didn't. That's awesome. And while we have the whiteboard out, uh, we are going to offer an opportunity for an idea slam. If ever, anyone needs some help on a brainstorm, uh, we've got a nice full house today. So if you have uh, something you'd like to brainstorm, drop it into the chat. We've got a few more people we want to recognize for some, some good news. Uh, Kirsten is joining us again this week. And Kirsten, what is your good news that you have to share? So mine's not as big as yours, but uh, I have been so busy just running the business, as I'm sure you guys are all familiar with, that I haven't been able to do some of my creative stuff that I've been wanting to do. And so during COVID, I really took some opportunities to go back to my, um, to my roots of getting creative. And I'm so happy that we have created a whole new product line that we will be doing. I don't know if you can see this, <laughs> but it is a train nerd. And it is- yes. Northern and Union Pacific colors all in mind. So uh, it was a lot of fun. So we've got t-shirts, we've got um, mugs, we've got lanyards and uh, just a whole product line that we're really excited. So I was really excited to get the proof back and uh, can't wait to move forward on it. So it's just been kind of fun to be able to go back to some of those fun, creative money makers. And what a great way to make money when you can't uh, get as many people in the doors as you usually would. Last week when we talked, you were talking about how there's downward pressure on your revenue. So how many of those t-shirts are you hoping to sell? You know, our goal is to do about 200 this year. So, um, and then, like I said, we're going to do canvas bags and we've got um, uh, coffee mugs, lanyards, luggage tags, um, just a whole new product line. And we are the only ones I, I've patented it. So that way we're the only ones who can sell it. Nice. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So a question in the chat is, do you have toddler sizes of that shirt or just grown up sizes? I only have grown up as of right now, but I will put that the next, next order. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I will see you in a minute. Thank you. Great question. Uh, well, hey, I know a onesie, train nerd on a onesie not being cuter than snot. I mean, really. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Thank you for sharing, Kirsten. Uh, let's go to Cheryl. Cheryl, it's great to hear from you. You've got a win. What do you got? Since we're doing the nerdy thing, I'll just have to put out there, I can now torture you guys for another four years on OSHA. So I'm four year projected out for certifications. So how do you go about getting projected out for certifications? Is that a course or a test or what does that mean? Both. Okay. Yep. Is, it, is, is it hard to do that? Does it take a long time? It does. <laughs> so how long did it take? Um, 10 years just to get me in it. Uh, and then I have been a trainer for the last four years and I had to go through my renewal, which was 18 hours in front of uh, this computer last week. Oh my gosh. That sounds that. Congratulations. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, good for you. I'm sure that's a huge win in the industry, right? That's a big win to get renewed like that. That's a big win. Awesome. High five. High five. Congratulations. All right. Garrett's looking for beta testers. Garrett, what do you got, man? So at uh, Pat's Idea Slam last week, I was chatting with Pat and Michael about my URL shortener, which I was uh, using for uh, my pretty bubble type stuff. And both of them got really excited. So I did a small shift and pivot and created mkecc.com, oh, yes. which is a URL shortener that I'd like people to uh, log in, sign up for, and use the free product. Don't subscribe to any of the plans yet. That's not working yet. But if you find any bugs or anything going wrong with it, let me know. Because I'm, I'm working with the developers of this expensive product and um, hopefully we'll go live soon. And I'm hoping to talk to Pat about this a little bit later. That's awesome. I'm definitely in to beta test this because I hate finding a random link shortener. So what does, if I can ask, what does the business model look like? Do we subscribe to participate to it eventually? Or how, how do you take a product like that or a service like that, make it a product? I guess I just don't know how it works. Well, between you and me, I, I'm hoping to sell it to you. So it's an added benefit to all of the idea network people. Yeah. Yeah subscribe to the ideas network because the ideas network is a really awesome group of place 
for people to go into and then uh, subscribe for uh, either professionals or even marketing firms to, uh, to use for tracking and, and other cool stuff with, with the, uh, their own custom domain names. That's super great because I'll tell you the address of the Idea Collective is ideacollective.patmilleridea.coach.com. That's a lot of letters. Well, and Garrett, do you want me to share the use case that I shared with the chamber the other day? Absolutely. You're awesome. Is that okay, Pat? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so here's the deal. People are like, ooh, why do we need a URL shortener and why are some of us nerds thinking that this is the sexiest thing you could find right now? Here's why. Because from a marketing perspective, you want to know when you've invested some dollars in something, you want to know how it's paying off. So let's just say, for example, that, that my website, I, when I put my link out for everything related to the Brookfield chamber, chamber, that I used a particular URL that drives to my website. So then everything that I do related to the Brookfield chamber goes through that particular URL. So I can actually see how anybody coming to my website from the Brookfield chamber, it, I can track the data, I can measure ROI. The other example that we've seen is like when you go to the Biz Expo, right? And you have, you're handing out all your stuff at the Biz Expo. And how do you know who came to you from the Biz Expo? You use a specific URL shortener that you have just for that particular event. And then you can measure your data and you can say, oh, I did get hits or, oh, I didn't. And this is what you can use to negotiate future things. You can also use it to create a, a URL for a client. You send it off to the client and you know when the client either clicks the link or if they're bullshitting you when they say they click the link and they never did. Well, and the last use case was I actually used a URL shortener, but I used bit.ly and then that wasn't pretty um, for the women, um, for the eWomen Summit. So I had 20 different showcase tables, each submit me their video link, but I wanted them all to look really consistent. And I wanted to be able to know how many people actually clicked the links. So I put them through the URL shortener and I own the bit.ly's on that. And they still see the traffic on their videos, but I get to see that. So just in case somebody's like, oh, I didn't get anybody. I'd be like, oh, really? Mm -hmm. It's accountability and tracking and all the fun things that data nerds love. Yeah. And Garrett, if you get good at this, you might as well make a shortener called prettybee.com or pretty bob or something like that you might as well have I, the I have shortener drive to your one. business i have shiny dot one for my yeah, there you go. absolutely well that's great i can't wait to test it and i just seeing you two get so excited about it means there must be something going good going on because <laughs> i don't uh i don't quite gas uh, grasp all of it but um uh, that's awesome. Okay, I want to show one quick thing. John had to jump off the call and some of you are reporting that we've got some nasty weather coming in. So let's go over to the weather center and I decided to pull up the radar. Uh, back on the radio, looks like a whole bunch of stuff is coming in. All right, don't die. Okay. Oh, wow, that sounds like weather radar anyway. Okay, there we go. Uh, you know, I'm going to take a shot in the dark because I'm trying to reach out through the private chat and I couldn't get Julie's attention. So we're just going to unmute Julie Callahan for a second and see if Julie is with us. Julie, are you with us? Are you paying attention to what we're doing here? I am, and I replied to you. Oh, you did? I didn't see it. Well, yeah. welcome to the call, Julie. So one of Thank the newest so members much. of the Idea Collective is Julie Callahan, and she lives in Colorado. So she's our newest friend. Uh, Julie, can you introduce yourself to everybody on the call? Yes, I'm Julie Callahan, Callahan Accounting and Bookkeeping. Um, my big win for this week, was actually going through my calendar and starting to take away the 16 groups that I managed to join in the last three months. Um, so I've simplified and obviously this is one group I'm very interested in being a part of. Um, but yeah, that was my big win was to try and simplify so I can focus more on the groups that I really want to be a part of and get involved in. So that's me. That's Thank great. you, Pat. Well, I had the chance to meet you through eWomen, and we're going to put you on the Lift As We Climb podcast here soon. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what you do, and if someone needs what you do, what we hire you to do for us. Okay, so I am a bookkeeper, um, but I work a little differently. I work with small clients, and I really am trying to take away the pain and frustration of people having to organize and keep their books up to date. Uh, I use an I, uh, cloud platform, QuickBooks Online. And um, so I automate um, systems and review the processes that people have and then automate them so that um, things have begun quicker 
and also QuickBooks tutoring for those who really love figures but want to automate and just don't know how to do that. So that's me. And even though you're in Colorado, someone here in Milwaukee could use you. Absolutely. I'm all online. So whatever I do, people log in and see and vice versa. Anything they do, I can also see. And everyone's being so polite, but I'll ask the obvious question. Share with them where you get your beautiful accent from. Oh, I am originally from Australia. That's a big place. Where from Australia? <laughs> uh, I grew up in Canberra and then moved to Sydney um, before moving to the States. So, um, yeah, so from the eastern side of Australia. Well, we're glad you're here and uh, make yourself uh, familiar inside the group and everyone will say hello and get to know you a little bit. So it's great to have you and thanks for joining us and for having us be one of the groups you're going to be a part of. Yay, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to make it worth your while. So thank you for that. Thank All right. So uh, we're coming in for a landing here soon. So we want to make sure that we reserve some time if anyone needs an idea slam. If so, you want a brainstorming for your business, it's free. Uh, got a great group on the call today. Make sure you drop something in the chat. I do want to talk real quickly about the Idea Collective. We are going to launch this week our new member drive for Mike Michalowicz. He is a small business author and keynote speaker. He wrote Profit First and Fix This Next and The Pumpkin Plan. Uh, the paperwork is done and he's been paid. Ah, so we're going to get some members into the Idea Collective. And uh, we are working on an entire folder full of assets where you can tell your story to your network and invite them to join the Idea Collective. So uh, we are this close. We're going to have that done this week and out to you. We're also going to do a big group of advertising on social media to get some new members into the group. So watch for that in the group. The one thing that I could ask for at the moment is I'm looking for some testimonials. If you're willing to drop an email or a comment on the um, post inside the Idea Collective about what you've enjoyed in the group, what you get out of it, and if someone was considering joining, why they should. Uh, that would be really valuable. Uh, so keep your eyes open for that. The other thing that's kind of cool is Mike gave us a list of different things that he could talk about, uh, and we put it up for a vote. And the thing that won was how to make your business a niche leader instantly. So we're going to talk about differentiation, and that's actually the subject of his next book, which is kind of cool. So we're going to get a sneak preview on his thoughts of uh, differentiation and how to make your business a niche leader. So that's kind of cool. So with that, let's uh, sign off for today and say thank you to Sue Gresham for uh, sharing all of her LinkedIn knowledge and good luck on your course next week. Uh, Andy Wines, of course, for adding the extra info and uh, congratulations on YGTV. That launch is off to a great start. And it's exciting to see. And thanks to all of you for joining us. Thanks to our sponsors, Serendipity Labs and the new Idea Collective for Small Business Owners. And a giant high five to the coolest lady in show business, Jennifer Buchholz, who's producing the show, uh, the ultimate connector in my business BFF. Last thing, don't forget to text the word biz to 414-240-1315. And that'll get you on the show distribution list. One last note. If you have something that you would like to present on this show, let me know. I'm looking for guests and we're going to be more purposeful about scheduling folks that have something to say on to the small business rally point. So um, make sure that you get to me uh, and we'll book you for a Monday coming up soon. But with that, if you're in line of the storm, stay safe. Otherwise, have a great week and we'll talk to you inside the Idea Collective. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.